Hello there, everybody, and welcome back. Today, I want to start everything off with a question. What is Scrum? This may be a new topic for many of you out there, or it may be something you're looking to learn more about, or you may be a seasoned expert. So I want to go over a couple different resources as I prefer to define this strictly through the website that actually certifies individuals in Scrum, or to become Scrum masters, I should say. So you have a couple different websites, and I will put a link in the description to two of the biggest uh, or most well-known organizations for obtaining a Scrum Master certification, which are Scrum.org and Scrum Alliance. There are others, but those are probably the most popular two in the industry at this point in time. So what is Scrum? If we go over to the Scrum.org website, you'll see that they list it as a framework for developing and sustaining complex products. So you'll notice that they list Scrum as consisting of roles, events, artifacts, and rules that bind them together. So two individuals that assisted with developing Scrum are listed here who actually uh, created the Scrum guide that we'll be viewing shortly. So essentially what this Scrum guide does is outline everything that you should really need to know about Scrum or at least enough to help you apply this framework. I've heard of arguments out there where people describe it as a methodology, not a framework, or vice versa. In reality, you really just need to stick with what works for you. It's designed to be adaptable. They talk about it, it being based on empiricism. It's, it's what's provable, what works. And in reality, Scrum is about creating incremental products or a product in increments as opposed to more traditional methodologies like waterfall. What does that mean? Well, looking to the Scrum Guide, you'll see the definition as Scrum is designed to be lightweight, simple to understand, and difficult to master. So Scrum was originally developed for really software development teams. The idea was, in the past, when Scrum was originally invented, before that, using waterfall environments, people were creating software, or teams were creating software, really in one go or one round. So the idea was we're working with this bank and we're developing an application to where users can log in to their portal and access their account information. Well, you go through and you develop the application and obviously the process is much more complicated than that, but you end up with one end result. Well, what if you take that to the client and they decide they don't like the interface or the level of security encryption is not what they needed or they decided they didn't need the project at all anymore. There could be any number of changes and now you have to go and restart the entire process. The idea with Scrum is providing products in increments much quicker. So overall you're providing that incremental and more sustainable progress so that if there are changes that need to be made they can be made very very quickly and you can adapt to the process. So. With Scrum, you see a process framework that has been used to manage complex products since the early 1990s. It's not a process technique or definitive method. It's a framework that you can employ various processes and techniques. The idea is with Scrum, you will usually have a Scrum master. And this is an individual who helps you to apply this framework to a team. As opposed to a, a traditional project manager, a Scrum master is someone who is more of a servant leader. The individual does not necessarily have to come from a very technical background, which is interesting because they are working very closely with a development team, which in many cases will be a, like a software or IT focused team. So uses of Scrum. You'll research and identify viable markets, technologies, and you can read through these in your own time if you're interested, but it's all about sustainability and developing software, hardware, or really just incremental products or services. So it's about really the delivery. So you'll see when you scroll down, Scrum Theory is based on empirical process control or empiricism. Basically, knowledge comes from experience and making the decision based on what is known. The idea here, again, it's what is known. If we spent two weeks creating this product increment for the previous example of software for a bank, and we want to create this application. We'll start out with creating a working 
portion of that application and say, okay, here's what we have so far. That will allow the individuals at, let's just say, the bank to say, you know what, here's what we need tweaked. We need this level of security encryption. We need to have this kind of a login page. Here's the color scheme we want. And it allows you to go back to the software development team and say, all right, here's the changes that we need to make. So it's based on a couple different uh, pillars. You'll see transparency, inspection, and adaptation. Transparency being everyone knows or has access to the information that they need to know to complete and finish the product. The definition of done is really, really big in Scrum. It is what is done. Not almost done, close to being done, done but there is something that I need to adjust. There is a accepted value or an accepted metric to determine what done actually means. Then you will see inspection. It's all about inspecting the work to continue to meet a sprint goal, which we can discuss shortly. And then adaptation. So the inspector determining that aspects of a process deviate outside of the limits, then the process needs to be adjusted. So there are four events for these pillars to essentially be uh, completed or implemented. You have sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospectives. Sprint planning is the concept of planning for a sprint. What is a sprint? Essentially, when you are looking to create product increments, you move in Scrum in sprints. The idea is, if we're going to create this product in eight weeks, we will have two-week sprints. At the beginning of every sprint, we will plan what that sprint is going to look like. What do we need completed by the end of that sprint? How will that get us to our sprint goal? And then... To make sure that everyone stays on track and keep updates, you will have daily Scrum meetings. The concept of Scrum is heavily focused on keeping these at 15 minutes or less. Every single day, you will meet to ask the big three questions, which are, what did you do yesterday? What are you doing today? And are there any issues or hindrances or impediments that you encountered that you need help removing? Which will typically be asked by the Scrum Master. Once the sprint is completed, you'll have a sprint review and sprint retrospective. These allow you to essentially look over the process as a whole. What did you do right? What could be done better? How do we need to essentially readjust? So the sprint review, the project is assessed against the sprint goal to determine the planning that is needed. Ideally, the team has completed the product backlog, and which we'll discuss. Uh, but it's more important that they achieve the overall goal. So the idea of the review is to review the, the process or the progress overall. Now, next up, we have the sprint retrospective, which is the last thing done in a sprint. This is essentially done immediately after the sprint review, typically the same meeting back to back. This is where the entire sprint team, including Scrum Master, product owners, participate is usually a pretty short meeting where you're covering really everything that's needed to know, asking members what they like to start, stop, and continue, just to go over really, again, in more detail with involving all parties to make sure that we're as efficient as possible next go-round. Then you have the sprint values, or the scrum values, which are listed here, very close to the scrum pillars. This is really the core of Scrum. It's, it's making sure that you're open and honest and committed, courageous, focusing on being open and respectful to others. Now, you have the Scrum team, which consists of a product owner, development team, and a Scrum master. The product owner is the individual that is going to have the uh, really the, the exclusive relationships with really the development team, Scrum master, and any executives as needed. So product owner is the sole person responsible for managing the product backlog. This includes these bullet points, which you can feel free to research in your own time, but essentially making sure that the backlog, what needs to be done, ordering the items in this backlog to make sure that goals and missions are clearly expressed and achievable. Next up, they are really a single person, not a committee. So they're representing desires 
of the committee, which could be high level executives for, let's just say the previous example in the bank. They're meeting with individuals that need this project completed and they are acting as sort of an intermediary between all of the parties involved. You'll also have the development team, typically between three to nine individuals. Development team is designed to be a self-organizing team, which is one of the core philosophies in Scrum or one of the core concepts. They have all of these characteristics listed. They are going to be, they're going to have specialized skills and areas of focus, but accountability belongs to the development team. It's all about having a team that's self-organizing, a team that can turn product backlog into increments of potentially releasable functionality in the example of the application for a bank. How do we create this application start to finish? Maybe the first increment is an application where you can log in. It may not give you access to something that you're logging into, but it gives you a workable increment to provide to management to explain what you have so far. Now, Scrum does not necessarily recommend titles for development team members because the idea is it's a self-organizing and cross-functional team. And there really no sub-teams. The idea is we're here to get this done. We're not going to have a hierarchy. It's I need to go to talk to Jane or John Doe about whatever the function is. I go straight to them and we hash out whatever the issue or whatever may be needed. Development team sizes are listed here and sprint planning and retrospectives and really the entire sprint process. There are specific limits. However, the time spent on a lot of these uh, these events are going to be based on the need of the project or the sprint. Now, the Scrum Master. The Scrum Master is responsible for promoting and supporting Scrum as defined by the Scrum Guide, if you were to get the PSM certification from Scrum.org. So the idea of a Scrum Master is a servant leader for the Scrum team. You're the one, in many cases, running the sprint meetings or uh, really the daily Scrum and really just determining the interactions with the Scrum team or understanding the interactions. So you're going to be asking individuals, what are you completing? Where do you stand? The really the big goal is removing impediments. So you're making sure that the goal, scope, and product domain are understood by everyone on the team, finding techniques for effective backlog management, and ensuring that product owners know how to arrange backlogs to manage value. Really, the Scrum Master is the one that helps to keep everyone aligned with a common goal. They have a service to the development team to coach and develop the team in self-organization and cross-functionality, as opposed to a project manager who, in some ways, some may think that they breathe down your neck or that they are a little bit more commanding or authoritarian or authoritative, but in this case, you're helping the development team by creating high-value products, you're removing developments, facilitating scrum events as needed, and coaching the team, uh, which is, really has not fully adopted this, this framework. And then the scrum events listed are creating regularity and minimizing meetings. So really here, uh, Sprint is that container for everything that we've discussed so far. So the heart of scrum is really the sprints. It's what they call a time box of one month or less, where a done or usable or potentially releasable product increment is created. So earlier when I mentioned an eight-week time frame with two-week intervals, that's much less realistic for this type of work. But if we were to say a four-week increment or a four-week time box, then we may need to do weekly sprints where we will do a sprint meeting to determine uh, what do we need to accomplish. We'll have our daily scrum meetings to make sure that we're staying on track. And then as a scrum master, you ideally are going to be following up with a development team, uh, essentially during your daily sprint, which you keep to 15 minutes or less, figure out who's having an issue and what that issue is, potentially staying with them after to help them resolve the issue. Maybe they need feedback from an executive because an idea was shot down, but they need to know what that executive needs. You make sure that you remove any impediments, whatever they are, and coordinate with everyone as needed. So there are additional topics on sprint planning listed in this scrum guide, sprint goal, daily scrums, and how they're structured, the sprint review and sprint retrospective. I just want to touch on the review and retrospective as they are very similar to some people and I want to make sure that we're kind of clarifying that. So a sprint review is held at the end of the sprint and essentially inspects the increments 
and adapts the product backlog as needed. So uh, it's usually a four hour meeting in one month sprints. For shorter sprints, it's shorter overall. Now, bear in mind that with these timeframes, Scrum is very, very particular about sticking to these timelines. It's all about being adaptive and making sure as you're creating these product increments, you are really trying to get as much value as quickly as possible without sacrificing anything. So this is where the development team is going to demonstrate the work that it has done. Done in quotes because you have the definition of done that you've established, which means this product or this increment is done. It's not done with the need to fix this. It is, we are saying, 100% complete. And then uh, attendees will typically include scrum team stakeholders and, that are invited by the product owner, who is the one having the relationship or that has the relationship. This is where you're discussing that product backlog, which is essentially what needs to be done to get to a fully finished product. What have we completed so far? Where do we need to go next? It's very collaborative and provides valuable input for the next sprint planning. Well, how is that different from a retrospective? The retrospective is an opportunity for the Scrum team to inspect itself and create a plan for improvements. So this occurs after the review, but prior to the next sprint planning, often directly after the previous sprint review. This is where you make sure it's positive and productive. Although this may sound um, a little unique and you're really trying to coach and help adults, but in reality, in the grand scheme of things, a scrum master is focusing on value. So these are often things you need when you're having this or working with a collaborative team. There are fights and issues that will arise with various parties. You're there to manage emotions and in some ways manage a project. So you're encouraging the scrum team to improve during this process. So you're inspecting how the last sprint went. You're identifying and ordering major items that went well and improvements and creating a plan for implementing the improvements the way, to the way the scrum team does its work. Lastly, we will see a smaller section with the artifacts for Scrum, and then an overview of the product backlog, which is really key things to think about, never complete. Scrum is dynamic. There are always gonna be things that are changed and added. So if you want, you can review this in your own time, but it really just tells you uh, quite a few different things about the backlog, including the items that will occupy the development team, um, what's reasonably done within the sprint time box. It's Think of it as your list of items to complete. And that's a very, very loose definition. Lastly, it has a section about monitoring progress towards goals, sprint backlog with additional details, increments, artifact transparency, the definition of done, which is very big. It may seem simple to individuals who are not as familiar to Scrum, but it is very, very easy to consider an item almost done. I can work on 20 different tasks and be 5% close to finishing this one, 20% close to this one. Definition of done means, again, completed. What does that mean? How do we make sure that we're not stretching the truth, essentially? You'll see your end notes, acknowledgement, and history. So again, this is a very, very quick overview of Scrum. This, All of this is, for the most part, quoted, and I'm trying to read really directly from the Scrum Guide to make sure that you're getting this information that's directly relevant to the PSM certification. Now, again, in the description, I will have links to a video where I, I kind of bounce ideas off of you or provide information as to what may be more beneficial, the scrum.org certification or the Scrum Alliance. But here, this is just to give you a general overview of Scrum from a, a very valuable resource. So to obtain this information, you can go to scrum.org and then you will see a resources section and they have quite a few different things that you can read. The Scrum Guide, which I just read from, is right here. What is Scrum? And a bunch of other resources for you. The Scrum Guide, this is the live version from the website, but you can get the full PDF as well. And it is completely free and it's about 19 pages and it's a very solid read. So I hope this clarified things for you. Obviously, Scrum is very unique, very dynamic, and a very, very uh, comprehensive topic. So it's a lot to digest, and I haven't covered everything here. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the channel for any other videos that I post.